Welcome everybody. My name is Angus Dawson. I'm Professor of Bioethics here at the Centre for Biomedical Ethics at the National University of Singapore. And today I'm going to be talking about how public health relates to ethical issues. Here are the objectives for the course. Essentially, we're going to explore thinking about what the concept of public health is and thinking about how these ideas about public health can play a role in terms of developing the health of individuals and communities. We're going to be exploring some of the relevant ethical values and how they apply within this context and see how they apply to a particular example. And we're going to also identify and explore some of the different roles for different parties when thinking about our obligations in terms of responding to these issues. So this is a structure of the module. In the first video, I'll say a little bit about introducing these ideas. The second video, I'll focus on talking about uh, lifestyle issues as an example and how they relate to uh, chronic diseases. Thirdly, I'll explore directly the more um, ethical ideas. And in video four, we'll focus on what we'll um, optimistically call possible solutions, essentially thinking about how we make a difference when we're thinking about these more public health aspects. So to begin with the introduction, when we think about the kinds of activities within clinical care that you are perhaps most familiar with, there are several features that we can uh, commonly see as being uh, crucial. The first is thinking about responding to a patient. Very often a patient has a request, they have a problem that they want to be addressed and they are coming in rec receiving or wanting treatment for that condition. And because we're focused on individuals, it's no surprise to see that the traditional values that we see explored and used in discussions of these issues tend to be of a particular type. Things like autonomy and privacy, very important values that protect the interests of individuals. Now clinical care is clearly central to thinking about health in general. And I don't want anything that I say in any of these videos to, to be a suggestion that I'm um, calling into question any kind of focus on clinical care. What I am doing is suggesting that there are interesting issues to explore when we think about how the idea of public health broadly conceived provides a, a place to explore some of the more social, community, um, societal population aspects of thinking about our health. Now, what I want to suggest is that there's a strong overlap in many of the issues when we think about the different kinds of aims and values between clinical and public health activity. But I also want to suggest that there are some key, specific, distinct aims and values when we think about public health. And that's the focus of these particular videos. For the rest of this introductory video, I want to explore two issues, which I see as being crucial background before we get on to explore our example in video two and the values and ethical issues in video three. So the first of these is thinking about the concept of public health it's itself. And second is the idea of exploring what the aims of public health actually are and how they might be different from those that are central within uh, clinical care. So let's begin with thinking about what is public health. Now, of course, this is a concept that has been um, disputed in the literature. What I'm going to do here is to outline two of the most influential definitions, which you'll notice has that they have a strong degree of overlap. And I don't think that's surprising. Secondly, I'll go on to look at a particular idea 
about trying to unify some of these ideas by essentially doing some analysis on what the key aspects of thinking about public health actually are. So the first definition that we have here is from the US, from the Institute of Medicine. And this um, particular definition, as I mentioned before, has a lot of overlap with the second definition, the one that comes from Donald Aitchison, who uh, at the time was the, um, the person with lead responsibility for health in the UK. Both of these definitions emphasize this idea about societal action, about prevention, about trying to think about what the conditions are that actually allow somebody to be healthy and create impediments to their ability to flourish. In some work that I did with a colleague, we uh, went through different definitions of public health and we suggested that what was really crucial was seeing that when we think about public health, there are two different senses of public that are at work in the concept of public health. And it's important for us to actually um, pull those apart so that we are aware of what the different aspects are and how we might then take that into account when thinking about the ethical issues. So for public health, we have collective interventions that aim to promote and protect the health of the public. So there's two things to note here. The first thing is that when we think about public health, we are interested essentially in a group, a population, not just individuals. Now, of course, there is a sense in which any group of people is made up of individuals. But the thought is that in public health, we are interested in different kinds of populations that might be um, everybody within a nation state, or it might be different subgroups that we've identified. And through epidemiological work, we are seeking to explore how differences in health might be explained. So the first idea of public is essentially this idea about a, a body of people, a population. And one of the reasons to do that is that we can make comparisons. So we can evaluate whether or not our public health interventions are actually making a difference or not. Because we can compare how things are now with how they were five years ago for a specified population. Are rates of um, diabetes improving or getting worse? So this is the first important sense of, of public. And we need to see that a lot of public health is interested in what are the features, what are the potential causes for thinking about what can improve or damage the health of a group. The second sense of public focuses more on the political side of things and suggests that often the kinds of activities that are going to make a difference to that first issue to do with public, the health of a group or a population, is that we require collective action. That is, we need to be acting together. And this is one reason why a lot of public health activity is seen as being crucial to uh, a government focus, because it is a government that very often acts on behalf of people. There are other issues here, and I'll come back to some of these in video four. The second issue that I want to explore in this introductory video is thinking about what the aims of public health are. And again, here I don't want to overdraw the distinction between uh, clinical care and public health, because of course, some of these activities that I've listed here as three possible aims for public health are things le that legitimately come up within clinical care. It's just the idea here is that we might explore what are the primary aims, what are the, the central aims when we're thinking about um, public health. It's important to see that we're interested in seeking to prevent or reduce harm. So that's again another reason why 
the kind of research conducted through epidemiology is really important. We're seeking to determine different kinds of associations between uh, potential causes and health outcomes. Where those health outcomes are harmful and we can do something to reduce the risk of that harm eventuating or we can actually prevent that harm from occurring, then we have um, some good reasons to actually think about public health activity. Secondly, we're interested in promoting health. So for people working in public health, we have to have a substantive idea about what health actually is. And I will suggest later on that this links up with thinking about uh, ethical ideas and perhaps ideas about uh, what it is for individuals to flourish. And then thirdly, much public health activity is very interested in differences in population health and how some of these might be due to causes which, were, which result from inequities within society. So once you've identified these, again, through doing the work of epidemiology, we have reasons to actually intervene to seek to um, ameliorate or um, remove those particular issues. So again, note that um, these are distinct from the aims of clinical medicine or clinical care. They're very often focused on centrally the idea of treatment. Again, go back to one of my early slides, this idea about a patient actually having a problem and coming in requesting help. Those, responding to those kinds of uh, issues and needs of a patient, I would argue, are distinct from those of public health. As I mentioned, there is some overlap here. And of course, there will be opportunities within clinical care to, for example, promote that individual's health but it's to do with what are the primary characteristics, the main sort of thrust of um, public health as an activity and how we can distinguish that from clinical care that is important here. And then secondly, note that all three of these suggested aims are he heavily um, ethically orientated. So the first one focuses on ideas about harm and Presumably the reason why we want to reduce or remove harms is because we see harm as being a negative thing. Secondly, promoting health, that's a way for individuals themselves to live healthier lives and to perhaps benefit from all the opportunities that there might be within society. And then the last aim here, one focused on uh, reducing inequities, is very much linked to the idea of justice. So my conclusion to this first video, which I um, sought to introduce some of these ideas, which I'm going to pick up and develop in subsequent videos, are that um, health, public health aims to deliver health through actions, collective actions, and um, it's really important that we see that we're interested in um, health of groups, populations, and so on, not just individuals. Though, of course, populations include individuals, and we um, are not justified necessarily in just overriding the interests of individuals for the sake of populations. That's a different issue. Health does over public health does overlap with uh, clinical care, um, but. I've argued, suggested that there are different aims going on here. And in the next video, what I'll do is pick up on these ideas about the definition of public health and the aims of public health and use a particular example to explore those. Thanks very much. See you next time.